Obviously, the euro bond is giving us a sense of how investors view Namibia. Oversubscription fivefold. So the world has responded positively. What do you think is counting in your favor? Yeah, well, we are very happy that uh, the, the global markets have received us uh, very well and we can get, could get that sort of, of, of reaction. Uh, and we think that this does not only enable us to raise the funding that we need to finance our, our deficit, but it has enabled us also to realize the objective of uh, providing a benchmark for a uh, future raising of funds mm. by Namibia's private sector, which is very important for the Namibian economy going forward. Yeah, I mean, obviously, at a coupon of 4.5%, it's a lot more attractive than some of the other African euro bonds. But there are concerns, generally, about the health of the Namibian economy going forward. You need to push your growth rates up. You need to manage inflation and debt. It's expected that in the near future, debt could be something like 34% of your GDP. Yeah, debt levels are, are very low currently, estimated at about 17% of GDP. And we do not expect that in the next three years they will go beyond 30% of GDP, which is what we have set as a cap. And to support that, we have initiated public finance reforms that aim at strengthening revenue collection and audit capacity specifically, as well as identifying new sources of revenue to complement the mm. existing sources that we have so that government is supported to continue with its reforms to support the economic growth. So I believe that uh, the macroeconomic fundamentals for Namibia mm. are very strong and there are no reasons for people to be concerned about the fiscal policy sustainability. I'm glad you mentioned new sources of revenue because investors are a bit hesitant. Uh, Namibia has got a fairly steep tax regime when it comes to corporate taxes, when it comes to uh, license registrations. It's fairly protectionist in that regard. What are you doing to make the environment investor friendly, incentivizing investments coming in? In fact, I consider Namibia's tax system to be quite friendly. Uh, we are ranked about second uh, amongst African countries by the Ibrahim Index on, on, on good performance uh, or rather good governance for 2010. Uh, corporate tax is 34.5% uh, for non-mining companies. Uh, it is 55% for mining, uh, diamond mining companies and 37% for non-diamond uh, mining companies. But this is uh, supplemented by very lucrative tax incentives that uh, include very lucrative uh, tax refunds from the Treasury that would actually leave the amount of profit for these companies that is taxable uh, very little. Let's talk about the social dimensions of the work that you do. Unemployment is fairly worrying at about 50% for a country with a very small population. Recently, the targeted intervention program for employment and economic growth was unveiled. What's your vision for dealing with this pressing problem? Yes, uh, government sees its role as that of creating a conducive environment for the private sector to grow so as to, to create jobs. And that is what TPEG aims to do. Uh, we have scaled up funding to in uh, infrastructure financing and also to education and health to ensure that we have a labor force that is healthy and skilled in order to support uh, private sector investment uh, businesses. Uh, going forward, that will continue to be the focus, including investing in infrastructure mm. so that the, the, the private sector investors would be able to move their goods from production centers mm. to um, export um, uh, destinations. Labor flexibility is something that business is asking for in Namibia, a little bit less rigidity? Yes, we, we are aware of that and uh, in Namibia we have a policy of uh, consultations amongst the stakeholders being government, uh, the industry and the labor movements and that is one of the aspects that, are, that, that is subject of discussions between the stakeholders. But in addition to that, government continue to invest in education to ensure that we have a labor force uh, that is um, uh, productive and can therefore mm -hmm. support productivity of private businesses. Obviously, we know that the international markets are in a little bit of turmoil and definitely African countries have suffered the reticence of uh, capital inflows from abroad. Growth also subdued. Expectations for growth this year, 4.8%. Uh, Do you expect this economy to be resilient going forward? 
Yes, we believe the Namibian economy will continue to be resilient. We, uh, we, we observe uh, a significant inflow of, of private investment, especially in the mining sector that has been the traditional um, attractive um, or rather the destination for private um, investment from um, external uh, sector and that would continue to be the case but we have observed that there are other sectors that are beginning also to attract foreign direct investment mm -hmm. and this include agriculture uh, as well as education we believe that with the policy environment that the government has created the investments we are making in infrastructure in mm -hmm. education in health and the reforms that we are undertaking to make sure that it's easy for people to conduct business in Namibia and it's cost efficient would continue uh, to retain in Namibia right. is an attractive destination for private investors. Let's talk about Namibia looking outside into the world. Obviously, you're an import-dependent economy and there's a call to start producing a lot to sell to the world. Their call is to also move beyond your traditional trading partners, South Africa and Germany. Extend your tentacles. You're doing business now with the Chinese, with the Indians, to an extent the Russians. How broad is your reach? Yeah, yes indeed, Namibia like other countries is trying to diversify its sources of uh, investment and its, its, its destination for export and those countries ha that you have cited has have indicated strong interest in, in Namibia, both in terms of investment and also imports of our products, where we will continue to engage with them because we believe that it's very important for Namibia to, to diversify its export destination and its sources of, of, of investment. And uh, these are the markets that are, are, are demonstrating the greatest potential in terms of growth and, and leading the recovery in the global economy. And finally, Minister, let's pat you on the back, you and your team. Namibia, when it comes to investment, has a fairly liberal policy when it comes to land ownership. I want you to talk us very briefly through how you've approached it, because this is a very sensitive subject across the African continent. Can foreigners own land? How do they use the land constructively? How to compensate people historically for land that they've lost? Outside of the commercial agriculture space, your policy is liberal. Why is that and how does it work? Yes, uh, the Namibian constitution uh, entrenches the right to, to own property. So uh, whenever the government uh, needs to procure land in order to redistribute to those that are, are dispossessed of land, that is done on the basis of willing seller and, and willing buyer uh, at, at market rates. Uh, that is very important for us uh, in terms of uh, assuring investors that the assets that they have accumulated in Namibia uh, is, is guaranteed in terms of their ownership and where uh, government would want to buy these or those that were previously dispossessed, it will be done on willing buyer, willing seller and at fair compensation. Uh, the bulk of Namibia's commercial land is unfortunately still owned by a small segment of our population, predominantly those that are of European uh, background and that is the reason why the government has instituted a land reform to achieve a redistribution of land in an equitable manner, in an equitable manner, amongst uh, Namibians uh, from all backgrounds. Unfortunately, this is proving quite expensive, but government remains committed to do it on the basis of willing buyer, willing seller. In terms of communal areas, uh, land is communally owned, where there is no freehold titles for individuals that are utilizing this land. Okay. This, although, present problems in terms of people are not being able to utilize the land in order to especially access loans, in order to, um, to create wealth, mm -hmm. it has served also a good purpose in that it has really created a safety net for the poorest All of right. the poor who have used this land to derive a livelihood, mainly through communal agriculture. Okay. Thanks so, so the much. intention of government is to uh, engage the stakeholders in order to see how the reforms of the communal uh, land uh, could be embarked upon, right. uh, accommodating the concerns of all the stakeholders.